an all-new Dr. Phil. She's seven months pregnant and on drugs. She has admitted using cocaine and marijuana. I didn't even use it today at all. This is a loop of babies that are born addicted. Look. Will she go to rehab? I don't really want to go. So is that a no? Or will she go to jail? She has admitted criminal behavior. I'm just going to turn this over to the police. Okay, wait. Let's do it. I hate to see people suffering, and you've heard long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. Take it. I'm going to get you the help that you need. Three, five, four. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Today, a story so dire, we are not going to stop taping until I get the answer I need to hear, because it will literally save an unborn child's life. Sarah is 18 years old, seven months pregnant, and admits that she smokes cigarettes and marijuana daily and has done cocaine. In fact, she just snorted some a few days ago. She's taken clonopin, heroin, and other street drugs, all while she's pregnant. But she says, hey, I know pregnant friends who did drugs, and their babies are fine. Well, here's what happened yesterday when I confronted Sarah her sister Sadie, their mother Kristen, and stepdad Ralph. My 18 year old daughter Sarah is absolutely out of control. No one can ever control me to this day. I'm gonna do what I want. Take a look at these pictures. They are the aftermath of a fiery crash caused by a girl purposely leading police on a high speed chase. Sarah's drug use has escalated over the years, going from marijuana to pills to crack and heroin. Seven months ago, Sarah found out she was pregnant. The first time I saw Sarah high after knowing she was pregnant, my heart just dropped. Eight months ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Sarah will come home, slamming doors, and start with verbal abuse right away on her mother. I feel like my mom thinks the world should revolve around her because of her cancer. I don't think she thinks it does. I think she thinks it damn well should, but it is not going to in my world. We have an empty chair here because Sarah is backstage refusing to come on. Well, here she comes. Oh, thank you. You're a liar. Sarah, I'm Dr. Phil, by the way. Oh, you are. Let me tell you what. We can do this easy or we can do it hard. Okay. What drugs have you used since you got here? <laughs> Marijuana. What else? I use cocaine twice. Let me give you a flash. When you use those drugs in the first trimester of your pregnancy, brain, spine, and central nervous system are at risk. I know, and I feel like scumbag. Thank you. Yeah, well, you're welcome. Thank you <laughs> no, I mean for abusing this child. Why did you refuse the drugs for you? All right, I need to stop for a second. <sighs> What's your biggest fear? That my daughters both are gonna die and that that baby's gonna be permanently damaged and not alive. We've been talking about Sarah. You have another daughter. Sadie, Sadie. Yes. Sadie is using drugs as well. Yes. I haven't touched any drugs in about two weeks. Sadie lost more crack last night. She's sick. She's gonna die. I dug myself into a pretty big hole and eventually I'm just gonna be buried alive. She's saying she does drugs with you. Are you an addict? Absolutely, 100%. You know that your sister's pregnant. Yep. But if what she's doing to this child is a crime, you would be an accomplice. Yes. Because you admit that you smoked crack and snorted heroin with your pregnant sister. You did take a drug screen. You tested positive for THC, cocaine, and meth. A month ago, you two were smoking crack together, snorting heroin together. That's the truth. Cut the crap. Once or twice isn't really like using. What? I understand. Oh, that was just hilarious. Oh, you know what? It's so ridiculous, it's hilarious. I'm They're sorry. laughing at the ridiculousness of your statement. Did you tell our staff member, a PA here, that you got drunk with someone from Australia? No. Since you've been here? No. Last night? No. No. She I, didn't she was drink right with her. I don't know whether you did or not. No, I'm just saying, did was, you say you did? You were right there when I was talking to them. I said, he was there. Okay, me and her were outside earlier that day smoking a cigarette. We were talking about how I was craving pizza. 
he so happened to order pizza the next time I was outside. I don't know. I don't know. His name is Glenn. Is he by chance from Australia? Yeah, he's Australian, but I did not drink. So I we did didn't not, just pull that out of the air. I did not drink. You could blood test me right now. I have no alcohol in my system. She I didn't did not drink, drink, honestly. I, I would tell you. I don't know whether you did or not. I'm just, I didn't ask you if you did. I just asked you if you said you did. No, I never said I did. Ever. I said he was drunk and making me very uncomfortable, so I went back to our room. Did you also say that you lost your state ID? No, I didn't his lose room? it. I didn't lose it. It should be on top of his dresser. I just don't remember which room number it is because I remember I emptied my pocket. This is just some guy you met? I met him the first day I was there. He was talking to mom. Mom knows him and she knows. And she you're in his cool. hotel room and you left your ID there? Yeah, because I, I used it earlier. It was in my pocket because I got cigarettes. Where were you two? <laughs> I didn't think it was a good idea to have their own room to begin with. Mom, I was trying to track them for the last three where days. Where were you when she's what? going in some Australian it's guy's four, room? She does In the middle know. of the night. We're it in our room. not the middle of the night. You, then you, when you, was it? I, I wish is, I was be able Mom, to be there. what we did you say when, when I told you about it this morning? You said, okay. oh, he's cool, isn't he? Like, uh, Sarah's seven months pregnant. She admits to using drugs. But she says, hey, I know people who've done drugs while pregnant. And their babies are fine. Now, Mom Kristen says her grandbaby is what she is most worried about. That's why we're here today. Here's what Sarah had to say. I'm having a boy. He's due April 25th. I believe Sarah is completely clueless about what it is to be a parent. I definitely feel like my life is strained out enough that if I was to get a job, I could raise this child on my own. Sarah is delusional. Sarah has no job, no education. Sarah has absolutely no concept of what is involved in child raising. I feel like I would do everything I could possibly do to give my baby a different life than my mom and my dad gave me. I'm terrified for that baby boy. What scares me the most about Sarah raising a baby is unless she gets her temper under control, I truly believe that that baby may be, you know, abused by her. She's been abusing it in utero. Why wouldn't she after he's born? Actually, sir, I <laughs> just actually enrolled myself in anger management counseling. Starts the 27th of January. So, no, I don't feel like I need help. Kristen and I have discussed uh, the possibility of us raising this child. The idea of my mom raising my baby makes me feel very angry. It's just not going to happen. I'm raising my child, and that is how it is going to be. Well, it's time to stop the back and forth. We'll be right back. rules for the house. There's no drinking, no using drugs. I believe if you don't want to live by the rules, you can move out of the house. I hold my ground with Sarah and Kristen does not back me. Sarah knows how to manipulate me. I have heard Sarah tell her mother how you're going to feel when you can never see this child. I'm a pushover. I'm horrible at following through with the consequences. I don't want my pregnant daughter to live on the street. When they try and kick me out of the house, I usually ask why, and it's usually a reason that makes absolutely no sense. And later, we have no choice but to report what's going on here. I haven't even used drugs, like I didn't even use it today at all. So I'm just gonna turn this over to the police. People need to know that I'm not using drugs right now. You could drug test me right this second and I would drug test completely clean except for marijuana. I'm not doing anything to harm my child. I'm doing everything I can for people to sit there and degrade me and say that I'm a mom and all this other stuff, you know, it's not right and they don't even know the situation. Well, Sarah and Sadie both claim they haven't used anything other than marijuana in a couple of weeks. And then as we got to talking, we found out, well, that's not true. Since we got here. Since they've been here, they've used cocaine and marijuana as well. Joining us now on the stage is the medical director for the Los Angeles Department of Child and Family Services, well-known author, a member of my advisory board, Dr. Charles Sophie. Dr. Sophie, thank you for being here. Uh, also, I've asked Los Angeles-based attorney and child advocate, Areva Martin, to be here, and I would like to talk to her about Sarah's unborn baby's rights 
here in just a minute. You, you two have been listening to everything we've been talking about yes. so far here. Yes. And we've got three people involved here. We've got Sadie. She says she's an addict. We've got Sarah who says, no, she's not, but she does use drugs. And then we have an unborn child here that's now at seven months, would Almost. you say? Almost seven months, so certainly uh, viable at this point. Now, you know, there's a lot of history you may have missed that we talked about while you were gone that the two of you heard. Your mother's parenting skills when you two were growing up was abominable. Uh, in my opinion, she was negligent. She was abusive. She was an alcoholic. Um, the stress that was placed on the two of you during that time, you probably don't even have an appreciation for how divergent that is from what you deserved to have. Uh, we saw stress signs in you at two years old, pulling your hair out, five years old, trying to jump out a window, drinking leftover alcohol, sitting around. I, I, I look at the two of you and I don't ask myself why you have problems with drugs and anger and dysfunctional behavior. I ask myself, why not? I mean, I, I totally get it. I, I know why you are making the choices you're making and you, there's nothing you can do to undo that now, but you can do the right thing now. Uh, so I get it. I get it. It isn't fair. You didn't get a fair shake when you were growing up. You didn't. You deserved better and you didn't get it. Sadie, you deserved so much better. Neither of you got what you deserved. But that legacy has to stop at some point. I don't want you to do the same thing with your baby that your mother did with you. I don't want that to happen. You know, I, I don't want that to happen for either one of you. I, I really don't. But at this point, uh, let's, oh. let's talk about this baby at this point because I, I understand, but Sarah seems to minimize and trivialize this. I want to talk about it medically and legally. In Arivas, what about this baby's rights here? You know, Dr. Phil, talk about cases of babies having babies. This is just a prime example of a baby having a baby. And thank you for stepping up for this unborn child. And in states across this country, women who abuse drugs while pregnant are criminally prosecuted. They're put in jail. They're fined. They're forced to go to counseling. So you're not only risking <clears throat> your freedom, you're risking having that baby in jail. So this is such a serious matter here. And, and I'm hearing you, you know, make excuses for it. But what I want you to leave here with today is that you can be in jail. Do you want to have your baby on the floor of a jail? And someone take that baby away, even before you can touch, coddle, or name that child. That's what we're talking about here. Some very serious implications for you criminally as well as civil uh, commitment for you and having that baby taken away from you. So, Dr. Phil, this isn't just about, you know, getting Sarah help. This is about that baby being put in a safe place. This is oh, a loop of babies goodness. that are born addicted. Oh, look. Oh, look. You gotta look at it. You have to, Sarah. You have to feel it. These babies shake. They're in withdrawal when they're born. They're craving their heroin. I would never want to do that to my baby. Across this great country, from coast to coast, you've told me about the crossroads we're facing. That's exactly why I wrote, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. This book isn't just a conversation starter. It's a roadmap for standing strong in the face of adversity, for embracing our core values when they're needed most. We're talking about real strategies for real people dealing with real issues from navigating the complexities of today's polarized world to fortifying our families. And I set forth in the book 10 principles that I think are critical for a healthy society. This is not about politics. I'm not a politician, don't want to be a politician, don't know enough about politics to talk about it. But I talk about every angle of life as we know it, from family and relationships to the burning issues that are shaping our world today. We've got issues. How you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity and you'll find it anywhere books are sold. It's about time we start addressing what truly matters. 
Stop wasting time scrolling through endless clickbait, social media, and emails trying to keep up with the news. Instead, listen to all the news you need in just 10 minutes. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. The Newsworthy podcast makes it faster, easier, and more enjoyable to get unbiased news on the go. It helps us navigate the news without feeling overwhelmed. Even when my time is limited. So much detail and information in 10 minutes. Listen now by searching The Newsworthy in your podcast app or go to thenewsworthy.com. I do know that using drugs of any sort is not okay when you're pregnant, but I am good friends with people that did use when they were pregnant and their children are perfectly fine. They have no problems. That does not mean that I think that my son isn't going to have any problems. He very well could, but it's not going to change the fact that like, I still am going to love the shit out of him. And Dr. Sophie, I, I want to talk to you in a minute as the medical director of the largest Department of Child and Family Services unit in the entire United States. You are the medical director of that. I want to talk to you about that aspect of it in a minute. But first, I want to talk to you about this from a medical standpoint, because I think Sarah, in her mind, just because she doesn't know, I don't think she's trying to be hard-headed about it, I just think she doesn't get the ramifications right. of what she's doing on this unborn child. From a, right. from a medical standpoint, what are the risks here? I mean, the earlier in the pregnancy that you insult that child with drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, you're risking the development of their spinal cord, their brain, their vital organs, kidney, liver, all that stuff. You have put from birth to at least the first trimester about 10 or 20 barriers in this kid's way already. We don't know what, what the ramifications are going to be. So, I mean, from a medical standpoint, every puff you do, every snort you take, you're adding another problem for that child. Do you get that? Yeah, I get that. And I didn't know that. And <laughs> this is not to scare you like we're just making noise. No, I we're know. We're killing and this I'm baby. I'm not trying to make excuses. Right. I'm not... This is a oh, loop of babies goodness. that are born addicted. I, I want you to, everyone, just take a look at this. Look. look. These, look. You gotta look at it. You have to, Sarah. You have to feel it. <laughs> because that's what's going to make an impact for you. And I wish we could show her, Dr. Phil, women on floors in prison <laughs> delivering babies. That's a reality. Okay. Oh. Sarah, these babies shake. They're in withdrawal when they're born. They're craving their heroin. <coughs> they can't suck. They can't eat. They get diarrhea. They vomit. They don't gain weight. They don't bond to you because they're too busy neurologically. There's so much noise going on for them. And then they have delays. Often they don't talk. They suffer from mental retardation. That's the reality of why I agreed to talk to you. Because I don't think any young woman with a clear view of what the risks were would make the decisions you're making. I think if you knew then what you know now. I would never want to do that to my baby. Okay, but you, so you've learned something here today, right? And I'm so sorry. Like, I cannot wait to tell. But like... And the fact is, it, it may not be too late because what needs to happen at this point, and Dr. Sophie, help me out here. I don't want to get out of my lane. On Oops! The Podcast, join me, comedian Julio Gallerati, as I examine everyday life, the mistakes, the bad decisions, the goals, the jokes, the social engagements, and all things in between. I'm joined every week by producer and personal confidant, Ryan Lynch, various other comedians for witty, candid, and intoxicating conversation. Our listeners love Oops! for sophisticated banter, aka your mom could listen, and many feel like they're in the room with us chopping it up with old pals. You can find every episode of the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. But what needs to happen at this point is a very different type of prenatal care, a very different regimen that could bolster this baby and close any gaps that may right. have happened. There are things that can be done remedially right. that might can help this situation. And, you know, your baby may be completely fine. We don't know. We need to know. 
there are certain people that are mandated by law to report abuse and neglect and endangerment of a child. We have no choice but to report what's going on here. I haven't even used drugs today at all. I feel like Ralph just needs to just, like my mom, open his eyes and realize the reality of everything. It's not me. I am not the problem. I feel like it's Sadie's drug problem more than anything. People should definitely stop judging me because they don't even know what's going on. I believe that you have a choice to make right now, and that is to voluntarily submit yourself to an inpatient program of care for you and your baby to find out where you are and deal with your drug use, with your anger, with your bitterness towards your mother, which is very understandable. I, I, I understand. I mean, you, you call her every name in the book. No, I don't. I don't call her every name in the book, actually. Well, you must have a different book <laughs> than I do. What does, what does she say to you? What does she call you? Uh, oh. I got a bleeper. Just oh. Okay, I've been called everything from a bitch to the word to an idiot, freaking moron, stupid, lazy, a selfish. Um, the latest thing was I've been an since I got diagnosed with cancer. It's not like I like call you at all. Like it's not like I'm like oh mom every single day. Blah blah blah. No mom. No. It's like rarely ever. It's just like Ever. when you're mad, you say things you don't mean. And it's like, I know. we need to learn how to control it. That's it. It's not like you mean it. <clears throat> you love mom. I know you do. It's not that. You know, those things you, you have to deal with. Um, and, I, I, and if you fail to do so, then let me now speak to you, not just as a general physician, but as a medical director of a child protective services, a department of child and family service, whatever it's called around the country, uh, what happens in these situations? I mean, the bottom line is you have to understand that you can have this baby, it'll come out of your body, but you may never hold it. And that doesn't mean that goes to them. Yeah, because any child welfare agency that gets involved is gonna see them as, as accomplices just like she is. So there's no relative in their right mind here who has good judgment, who's made any decisions to protect that child, so they're not inclined to give that baby to them. I know you think you have a second part of your head saying, well, I'll give custody to my mother, like you came out and said earlier. That's not your choice. That's gonna be the government's choice. <clears throat> and they have not demonstrated good decision-making. So none of them would be eligible at this point until everybody gets their act together. You have three months to do it. I would definitely get on them. I, and right. I'm, trying, I'm trying to derail all of that. Right. Do, do, there's a term called mandated reporter. There are certain people in our society that are mandated by law to report abuse and neglect and endangerment of a child. I'm one of those people. He is one of those people. She is one of those people. One, two, three are all mandated reporters. We have no choice but under the law to report what's going on here. Unless you do something dramatically to turn this around. I am going to offer you an opportunity and I'm gonna offer you an opportunity, both of you opportunities to go in to dual diagnosis treatment programs that are gonna help you with drugs and medical supervision and detoxification and help you with this baby and figure out where things are and what's going on. Ben Levinson, stand up if you would, Ben, introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Ben. Ben right. is the founder and CEO of Hannah's House uh, by Origins Recovery Centers, and they're in South Padre, Texas. Right. These are folks that have treatment plans designed mm -hmm. specifically for women. And it is a dual diagnosis treatment center that will deal with every aspect of who you are and help to provide the medical care and supervision you need to get a handle on whether or not damage has been done and what needs to be done to help this baby. Am I describing this accurately, Ben? Absolutely, and, and we're, we're not just, I mean, we're in the fight for two lives here. Um, this is a, a, a situation where, where Sarah, we gotta get honest. 
We have layers and layers and echoes of trauma and alcoholism. We have to start digging in. We have to start making some changes. And I am offering as a gift to you and your baby to send you there to get that help and get this under control. Will you take that help? I really don't want to go to Texas. I can't hear you. I don't really want to go to Texas. I mean, like. But your baby didn't want to have to take drugs either. It's not about you. I'm sorry? Could I do like drug testing? Like I, I'm, I haven't even used drugs. Like I didn't even use it today at all. She has admitted to criminal behavior of using cocaine and marijuana in this jurisdiction. So I'm just gonna turn this over to the police. Okay, wait. And wait. let them handle wait, it however they want. Let me talk to you. Our family's been through so much and we've exhausted every other possibility. This is our last stop on the bus. As a mom, knowing both of your daughters, your only kids are drug addicts. I don't think about how it makes me feel. I think about what it's doing to them and I just really don't want them to die. Will you take that help? I really don't want to go to Texas. I can't hear you. I don't really want to go to Texas. I mean, like... But your baby didn't want to have to take drugs either. It's not about future, it's about the baby. It's only I could do, like, random drug testing. I'm sorry? Could I do, like, drug testing? Like, I I'm, I haven't even used drugs. Like, I didn't even use it today at all. Mm -hmm. No. Um, Sarah, this is about the baby. It's not about I, I, you. I can't... I don't yes, like can. to travel. Like, I'm, your baby you didn't want to do You traveled here. You got here. Yeah, because I was told if I didn't come, your I would be homeless. Your baby doesn't want to withdraw from heroin when they're born or marijuana or anything, but they're not, he's I not going to have a choice. Rarely, rarely, rarely. Once is okay. all it takes. You guys make it seem like I use drugs. All, like Once to get, is all it takes. You are in like, denial about how, how serious your problem is and how it's hurting your baby. And we're here for the baby. That's right. The baby can't afford that one time. You one is one time too many for that baby. You may never get to know that baby. Come on. I agree. And you know what? I'm never using it again. Ever. Sorry? I said I agree. And I will, I am like, have already made the decision. We both did, actually. So if you agree you're going with Ben? Mm, no. We, what? We okay. um, listen, we, I, I'm... We both... What? I, I'm just... You can say... Yes, or you can say no. I just don't want but to be far away from me. I'm, I'm offering this to you, and I would very much recommend that you grab on with both hands and you do this for you and you do it for your baby. It is. I mean, big. I just don't want to be really far away from my, like... Sarah, no. you're far away from everything anyway right now. No, no. Okay, like, so what if I find a place close to my, like close, close to where I live? You, I you really do. don't. I can't. Like I hate being far away from. So home. is that a no? Yes. Okay. All right. Then, then I'm going to switch to involuntary, and we're what? we're going to have. No, I'm not uh, going to Texas. No, I that's can't. okay. No, 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 that's okay. But what I then what I am going to do is I'm going to report this. At this point, and Dr. Sophie, um, you are. My baby's gonna get taken away. Gonna get taken away. You are the medical director of the Department of Child and Family Services here. Just Consider this a report. Yep. Go. You, you have heard the whole thing. You have read the entire book. You know what mm -hmm. is done. You also know that she has admitted to criminal behavior in this mm -hmm. jurisdiction yes. uh, of using cocaine right. and marijuana. Uh, in this jurisdiction. Uh, there's question as whether she used alcohol or not, which would also be, be illegal. So she uh, has admitted prima facie to committing crimes yes. in this jurisdiction, your jurisdiction and the law's jurisdiction here. So I'm just going to turn this over to the police. Okay, wait. wait. And let them handle wait, it however they like, want. Let me talk to you. Hold on. Let me talk to you. I just want to know more about it. Let I don't me, even know how 
long? Like, I, I can't just answer yes. I can't just answer yes to something I know nothing about. I understand. You know what I mean? Like, I this, like how am I supposed to do that? I understand. I just wonder how long the treatment is. I'm, I know I'm willing to go. I just want to know how long it is. Probably about a year. I don't want to be away from my freaking life for a year. I don't understand why it has to be so drastic. Let me talk to you. Okay. Velvet, would you stand up, please? Can I? Uh, this is Velvet. She is founder and CEO of the Safe Harbor Treatment Center for Women. And Velvet Mangan is here to talk to you about a treatment plan because you admit straight up you are an out-of-control addict. And, like, nothing I can do to and, and, do it and myself. And you have no control. And I want my life Velvet back. is someone that I, I have such a history with. She has done such amazing turnaround uh, for women, as has been at Origins. And I asked Velvet to come here. Velvet, she's leaning into this at this point. Can you help her? Well, I really, this is, I was actually born addicted to drugs, so this really hits my heart. And what I want to say is that, you know, the attachment disorder that you have, the anxiety that you have, the medic, you're medicating really that, that disorder you have inside. And so all I can say is that it's a gift that you have any willingness. I'd really like to support you in the transformation of self. I just wonder how long the treatment is. I'm, I know I'm willing to go. I just want to know how long it is. Probably about a year. A year? 90 days minimum to about a year. It takes a while to change our behaviors and our systems inside. Like, the fact that this is so embarrassing, so public, like, I, I really am not going to do anything ever again, but I don't want to be away from my freaking life for a year. It's not necessary. Like, a 30-day program, whatever. Like, I, I don't understand why it has to be so drastic. I don't. You understand. have a drastic addiction. I think we should both learn more about. You want me to be gone for a year? Honestly, would you love that? Okay, let me let me fill in some blanks here. Ninety I, days is fine, not a year. I think um, I think you're looking at probably a minimum of 90 days, and I think that decision will have to be made between you and them at the time. And it's this isn't an incarceration. I mean, you can leave after two days if you want to, and I'm not going to chase you. I'm offering you a gift, mm -hmm. and you, you will take it or you won't. And this is a, a, a wonderful place, and I have every belief that – uh, you're an intelligent young woman, and I think you and these folks, uh, once you get there, will come to a mutual decision about what you need to do and what you don't need to do. Uh, you may never go back to the place that you have all these triggers for drugs and drugs connections and all of that. That may be your choice ultimately. But right now, um, you, I am offering you the opportunity uh, to go there. Velvet is saying this is a minimum of 90 days. It could be much longer. Uh, but you understand, you're not being locked away. You can leave anytime you want to leave. Yeah, but I'm uh, in California. Like, what am I going to do? Oh, I give everybody a round trip ticket. Right. <laughs> I mean, I flew you out here. I'll fly you home. I'll fly you home mm -hmm. today if you want to go home today. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Like, I just want this to be over. Yeah. You know, we, we understand, all of us, that you two are all you have. You're your family. We get all that, that she did not do what she should have done. You're all each other has. We get all that. But you got to break it. It's not healthy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let both of these young women take a deep breath and think about the offer that's been made to them. And um, we'll get the final decision when we come back. up on Dr. Phil, visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, life strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. So, Sadie, I'll 
ask you first, uh, do you want to take advantage of that offer to get yourself back on the straight and narrow, or, or do you not? I mean, of course, but why can't I do that close to the people that I love? Because the one I'm offering you is here, and I don't want you close to the people you love. I want you away from the toxic history and pattern that you've had, the ability to stand on your own two feet. And interestingly enough, your family will be involved in this treatment program, and they will be there. And They're not going to be they there, be a, though. They'll be a part of that. So uh, it's a... It's a scary step, and it's a big step, but um, that's what I have available to offer to you. So it's either return to your addiction or make a choice to get healthy. And uh, Yeah, but what if, I don't know, it sounds stupid, but, like, what if this whole experience is enough to be like, I'm done, I don't want to do this. No, no, no. Well, let me, let me say, I, I've been doing this for 35 years, mm -hmm. and I know two things. One, this whole experience is not enough, and two, I'm not going to talk you into it. I'm offering you a gift, and if you choose not to take it, uh, and, you know, Keith's not going to let you come home. You're sure not going back there. So, you, you, you got to find... You've got to find a place. And and listen, look at me. At least look at me. You don't have to do this. Don't If you don't want to do it, don't do it. It's okay with me. Don't do it. I'll do it. I don't care. Okay. Right. Right. Listen, I, I, I know it's scary. I'm glad you made that decision. Sarah, um, I'm... <laughs> Calling on the same decision from you. I mean, I'm it's scary. Would it be for the rest of my pregnancy? Absolutely, for the rest of your pregnancy. Yeah. Here. Well. Yeah. Is that? Uh, yeah. Okay. So we have appointments with OBs in Texas set up immediately. We have a nurse here, an RN, to yeah. escort you back to Texas into the care of a whole team of physicians oh, and clinicians. For we have an OB on staff. The last three Therapist. Sarah. You're, you're in a women's only program surrounded by women who are all in recovery. Oh. The professionals are, are all expert in exactly what you need. And Sarah, we have a lot of work to do. This is an awesome day in your life. I know it's really uncomfortable, but you know what? It's also rather beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's take a journey, Sarah. Do it so far. It's been it's just so far. Listen, I'm real uncomfortable. Uh, begging somebody to save their own life. No, I'm, so no I just, I, my answer is like, yes, but I just want, I just want to know more. I want to know more. You'll know, you'll, you'll know more once you get there. Well, I guess so. And if you don't like it, then you can leave, but do know when you leave, I am calling the police and reporting I would it. too, if I were you. I mean, I have to. I, I don't have any choice. I have to protect your baby. I'd like to thank Ben Levinson uh, from Hannah's House by Origins Recovery Center in South Padre Island, Texas, and also Velvet Mangan uh, from Safe Harbor Treatment Center for Women in Costa Mesa, California. These are two, in my opinion, uh, top-notch treatment facilities. Also, a special thanks to Dr. Charles Sophie and attorney Areva Martin uh, for helping me with this family and with this baby. I also want to give a special thanks to our medical team at Doctor On Demand for assisting some of my team in preparation for the show. And if you at home want to have your own Doctor On Demand, there's a new app that we created. You can go to Google Plays or the App Store and download that DOD app, push it, and you can be face-to-face -face with a doctor in a matter of seconds. Uh, we'll see you next time. They're going to talk to y'all backstage and answer all your questions. Thank you. 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 Thank I really don't care.
how mad they are they if they're alive. I'm concerned about not smoking weed because I have since I was 15 and I have really bad anxiety attacks. I am so proud of you, Sadie. This is such a gift. It's such a miracle. It's okay. You are going to be awesome. You're, I'm so proud of you. That took so much courage. I'm so proud of you both so much. Let's go inside. Well, I'll tell you what. What we do in recovery is way easier than the way you've been living. That's for sure. Everything happens for a reason, and this is better for me and my son, so hopefully he knows I love him. Off to recovery.